Hi guys, this is Armita, Armita Gobadi, and I'll be your professor this semester for health psychology. Um, first of all, I'm very excited for this course because like this is my first time teaching health psychology. I used to teach developmental psych, advanced research and design, um, introduction to research and design, and so many other courses. So I didn't have the opportunity to just uh, see my previous students again in my classes, but this time I can see a lot of familiar names um, in class list, which while I was just checking them, I was like, my goodness, it, it sounds like, a reunion because I could see Andrew's name, Ariana, uh, from my, I guess, two years ago, uh, developmental psychology. It was like fall, I guess, 2022 or 2021. Uh, but I remember that it was in person. Um, I could see uh, Leah's name, Taylor, um, and a lot of other names. I cannot remember all of them, but but I'm very excited for that. Also, I'm very excited for uh, seeing um, new students in my class and majority of them, they are from other departments, but psychology. I can see students from political science, from uh, pre-psychology, from, uh, let me check, because my memory is like a fish. I could just forget everything. Oh, exercise science um, and, um, wow, my goodness, it's just a lot of, different department, public health, pre-public health, biology, neuroscience, computer science. Okay. It is, it's going to be an interesting class. I'm telling you. So let me share my screen, um, and start doing my lecture. Um, okay. It's here. Okay. Welcome to health psychology. Um, so. Like I said, my name is Armita, Armita Gobadi, and uh, we're going to teach this class online. Um, this is my dog, actually. Uh, his name is Jamie, Jamie Lannister. Um, if you are a Game of Thrones fan, you should know Jamie Lannister. I had a huge crush on him. Um, so my name is Armita. This is like the way you're going to pronounce my name. My last name is Gobadi. Um, and this is the way you're going to call me. Uh, you can call me Armita. I'm totally fine with that. Or you can call me Professor Armita or Professor Gobadi, um, whatever you prefer. Or you can just call me dude. That is fine. Um, um, I'm Iranian. My nationality is Iranian and uh, my ethnicity is Persian. Uh, I came here in 2019. Uh, I finished my uh, master's and bachelor's in clinical psychology. And now I'm doing developmental psych. Uh, with a minor in uh, cognitive science. Um, the area that I'm working as a researcher is cognitive and linguistic science and brain plasticity. I'm working on children, I'm working on adults, especially bilingual adults, and especially children from atypical development, like autism, Down syndrome, etc. I don't know if you're a cat person or not. I personally, I'm a dog person. One of my students, they got me this. Um, and inside of that, it's, it's just saying that dog person. So yeah, I'm very much a dog person, but I do love cats. Um, I cannot have a cat because like my, my personality is like a cat. So if I would have a cat, I guess it's not going to be interesting. Like the whole dynamic of the house going to be very toxic between me and my cat. Because <laughs> like I'm going to ignore her. She's going to ignore me. So yeah, it's going to be crazy. But yeah, long story short, this is a Persian cat. So in case you would forget my nationality and ethnicity, you can just actually think about my friend's cat. Um, his name is Pashul and he is like, he's like a king. Like the way he's just behaving, the way he's just treating to everyone is like a king, which is crazy. I cannot, honestly, I cannot tolerate that. So that's why I'm a dog person. I, and I do have a dog because like my dog is just very sweet. But I know there are some cats out there. They are just very nice, um, very humble probably. But Persian cats, they are not like that. They, they feel like they are king and queens. I mean, uh, yeah, okay. That's another story we're gonna talk about that. But yeah, more about me. Um, I run a lot on a daily basis. 
because I did have anxiety and I found that running and having physical activity can just help me a lot to just release that kind of tension. And I'm working on myself to just uh, be better mentally and physically. So just running and going to the gym is, um, they are helping me a lot to uh, just have like more resilience in life, to be honest. Um, I like dancing a lot. I'm not a very good dancer, but I'm, I'm just trying. I'm not taking any classes because I honestly, I mean, first of all, I'm lazy. Second of all, <laughs> I'm uh, very busy. Like my schedule is crazy. So um, all I'm doing is just at least taking one lesson from YouTube um, every week and just practice. Uh, the people that I love, um, like they moves first of all it's gonna be beyonce i love the way she's dancing i feel like she's the queen um but yeah i mean probably if if you are that kind of person who would go to different um clubs and dancing places you're gonna see me somewhere um just minding my own business and dancing and vibing so if you saw me just come and say hello uh, cause I can see sometimes my students, they are just kind of avoiding me, uh, but I can see them. They are just talking to someone and just saying that this is my professor. So instead of just doing that, just come and say, hello. Hey, um, I'm for example, Amy, and I'm very happy seeing you here. Cause, um, in online classes, you cannot see the student unless, um, it would be like some sort of WebEx meeting or like something like that. Or, oh, for your final project, I might see some of you, but that's another story. But yeah, if you saw me somewhere, either on campus or somewhere else, you can just come and say hello. I would be really happy to just see you in person. Um, I also love hanging with my friends, uh, but I don't know, maybe this is age or something like that. I'm about to be a homebody, uh, like it's just growing on me. Um, so why I wrote homebody like this? I have to fix it. But yeah, so I love to read. I love uh, rewatch my favorite shows and sometimes just be with myself and my dog. Um, and I feel like there is nothing wrong with just being um, introverts or just hanging at home just by yourself and just enjoying some good music. So it, it's fine to just be extrovert sometimes, but sometimes to be introvert. Yeah. I support different causes. Uh, first of all is gender equality. I'm a big, big fan of women rights and LGBTQ rights. And I'm also a big fan of diversity and diversity can be about age. It can be about, I know it is about race, gender and religion, but it also can be about age. For example, if you see a student who is older than everyone else in the class, you have to treat them the same way that you are treating someone who is like 20 or 21. You shouldn't actually have some sort of pre-assumption that someone who is older than other people in the class, uh, for example, they do have a specific problem of understanding your material. As a professor, this is my responsibility to adjust my material for every student in my class. So that's why I'm actually believing in diversity. Um, again, like you can see here, I do believe that no one in my classes should be judged based on their opinion, their sexual orientation, their gender, their age, ethnicity, and et cetera. I really try, I know it is very hard sometimes, but I really try to accept every possible different views as long as it would be presented in a respectful way. I know it's just very hard whenever you are hearing something that is very different uh, from what you believe, but whoever took in-person classes with me, they know that I'm very patient in hearing different views um, as long as it would be respectful. Um, about my research, I'm running different studies, like I said, um, and um, my team, like the team that I'm leading, um, they are actually 12 undergrad research assistants. One of them, she's master's, but majority of them, I mean, 12 of them, they are, they are from um, psychology and uh, they are undergraduate researchers. 
all of them they were my students at some point and now we are working together some of them they got fellowships uh, which means that um, some sort of awards that the university gonna sponsor you for uh, tuition and also they're gonna pay you a stipend uh, based on the work that you are doing uh, with your professor uh, which is gonna be me uh, some of my other RA, they got uh, into different conferences, uh, some international conferences in UK. Um, another one, it was in uh, Greece. Um, and some of them, they were like internal here um, at GSU and um, other universities. Uh, some of my students, they do have publication now um, after working with me for a year. And um, two of them, they got into grad school. I mean, they finished their education, so they got into grad school. So I'm very proud of uh, my students' achievements. Uh, you can see some of them here, um, and I guess you might know them uh, because they were your classmates if you had uh, previous courses with me. Um, they are good kids, and I really love them because they are working so hard. Um, so. I talked a lot about myself and I was just very fortunate that some of you guys emailed me in advance and introduced yourself. I'm assuming that you heard from someone that this is the way I'm going to run my classes because like I'm, I'm very like interested uh, of your own interests because like the way you're going to present yourself, your hobbies, activities um, or uh, your expectation from this course can help me a lot to just adjust my course and change the syllabus if necessary. Um, so I want you, I mean, I'm gonna create a discussion post and I'm gonna ask everyone to answer these five questions. Um, so this way we can just work together during the semester and just move forward. So, serious talk. Here you can see the name of the textbook. Uh, you have to buy this textbook. Uh, but the good news is a majority of professors at GSU, uh, they make you uh, to buy Connectus, which is like $120 something uh, extra that you have to pay. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna use question bank. So this way you're gonna save 100 something. Um, for yourself, probably you can you can go to Sephora and just get some stuff for yourself and or I don't know somewhere else, Barnes and Nobles. I mean whatever you prefer, or just have a drink. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm here to save you money, but yeah, so um, you don't need to get Connect Quiz. Um, I'm gonna use Question Bank. Um, so after getting this uh, book, we can just work on uh, different parts of the class. So uh, if you can, as soon as possible, get your book because it is necessary to continue. Your final grade gonna be based on uh, different parts. Number one gonna be based on class participation. It is very important to me. I know it is just 5%, but it actually sets my attitude. <laughs> uh, toward the class because like I mean I've never encountered a class that my students wouldn't be interactive like always they are just very passionate and like they are sending me a lot of emails talking to me about lecture and all that and sometimes to be honest I'm like dude I'm done I don't want to talk a lot about this so I might just tell them that, hey, let's do a WebEx together instead of just sending different emails. But like class participation is just very important to me. You're gonna have weekly quizzes every week, nonstop. Uh, but the good news is, okay, I'm gonna talk about quizzes in the quiz part. But yeah, you're gonna have uh, weekly quizzes every week and you're gonna have two discussion posts in which uh, you can just express yourself. Um, and I'm gonna read all of them, but your TA gonna grade them. Then you're gonna have final project, which gonna be, again, a big portion of this class. And I would say this is the most fun. I mean, it's it just the best part of the class, um, trust me. So uh, class participation, like I said, it's just very important to me. A big part of that is emailing because it is online. It is not that kind of class that I would just see you. 
So uh, you have to email me if you have any questions and your email must follow a specific guideline that I wrote, wrote it down here. Um, about my personality, I'm just very chill. I would say I'm chill 90% of the time. Sometimes like 5% of the time, something might piss me off. And it is like that 5% is about email. I, I mean, I'm not looking at you as a student of this class. I'm looking at you as an individual who gonna work outside of the classroom someday. So I'm gonna, I'm trying to just help you to be more professional. So I need you to just write your email in the best way possible. Like you're going to start with a polite greeting. You're going to offer your name. You're going to mention the class and section. It is very important because this way I can just understand what are you talking about? Because like I'm teaching different courses, right? So you have to mention the class name. Hey, Armita, this is health psychology and um, the online format. And you're going to explain your problem clearly. Then before sending the email to me, you want to reread your email to just make sure, okay, it does make sense and make sure that you actually address everything um, in your email. So this way, you're not going to send me another email in a minute. Because like I did have some students, they would just ask you one question. Then after sending the email, they actually remember that they're going to have another question. So they're going to send you another one. So that's not the way. And yeah, that kind of pissed me off. So just read your email another time before sending it to me um, and make sure your email is clear. And this is not just about my class. Do that for all of your classes. And if you are working out there like somewhere or if you plan to work, always follow these steps. They are very important because like the person, like your instructor, your professor, they cannot see you. They're going to judge you based on the way you want to email them. So just offer yourself, like present yourself in the most professional way. Avoid using, hey, yeah, I don't like when a student's emailing, hey, Armita, can you just, yeah, I know that. Uh, I know that we are almost in the same age, but it's like, you shouldn't call me, hey, you shouldn't call anyone, hey, when you are emailing them. But yeah, that's another story. Um, I normally will get back to everyone in 24 uh, or 48 business hours. I would say in not calling me 48, unless um, there would be some emergency situation, like I would be out of country or I would be doing a conference. And if it would be that kind of situation, I'm gonna tell you in advance, hey guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna be, for example, in Boston doing a conference. So yeah, it's gonna be like some sort of situation that I'm gonna give you a heads up. Uh, the email that uh, you can just communicate with me, it is this fine. Uh, please do not email on, on iCollege, cause like if you would do that, I might miss your email. So only communicate with me using uh, GS2 email. Okay. You know that, right? Um, majority of your question can be found in the syllabus, but I'm assuming that there might be some overlooking from me, uh, because this is my first time teaching this course. Um, so if you could not find an answer for your question in the syllabus, email me and ask. I'm going to update the syllabus based on your feedback. No, I'm not going to slap you, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of in my face. So. So weekly quizzes, they're always going to be due on Sundays, 11, uh, 59 PM. Um, I always would open them by Monday's morning. Um, it is open book. We don't have like any sort of camera or uh, time limitation for your quizzes. And you're going to have two attempts. 80% um, of your question, they're going to be factual, which means like you can literally open your book, find the answer, or just check the lecture, answer the question. 20% of them, they're going to be conceptual. You have to, under, you have to understand um, the material to just be able to uh, address that question. Um, I'm, yeah, I mean, I can see it can be hard. 
Um, but to be honest, the least important point for me is your grade. And I'm going to give you a lot of opportunity to cover a bad grade. So, um, I mean, yeah, don't be sad if you cannot get 100 every time. Um, just work and try to just uh, be better every time you are taking a quiz. And just having two attempts can just help you a lot to just improve your grade. But even though you didn't like your grade, you can just try more and more and I can see your progress. So I can just help you um, with your final grades. For example, if I would see that you started from 50% in the beginning and you're just trying to, uh, to like so hard to just be 100 every time, um, I can just give you some sort of um, opportunities to increase your grade but they're not going to be any makeup opportunities or it's not going to be for example having bad grades all the time and just reaching out to me by the end of semester and just asking for um, a curve or increase in your final grade it's not possible uh, my final judgment of your final grade going to be based on your final project so like i'm going to see every possible assignments in a different way and i'm going to just uh, grade you based on all of them if that makes sense for example if i can see you are participating in the class, you are doing discussion posts on time, you are doing big quizzes in a good way, and uh, your final project is very good, um, I would reconsider one bad grade from your big quiz, if that makes sense. Speaking of discussion posts, here you can see that um, we're going to have two uh, discussion posts. Um, so basically, you're going to do a post and your post must be 500 words, and it has to be more than uh, just, I feel that way, or my mom told me it's gonna be true. It should be based on scientific studies. It should be based on uh, one of the chapters of the book. Um, and it has to be in APA 7s, free of typos, uh, free of um, any sort of grammatical mistakes. Then you gotta do two feedbacks, each feedback must be um, 250 words, and um, it should be more than, yes, for example, Helen, I agree with you, or, um, for example, no, Jay, I disagree with you, no. It's going to be like something very professional, just saying that, hey, I really like this point, but based on the book, for example, I feel like maybe you have to just work on this part. You see what I'm saying? Like, you're going to give your peers advice instead of um, just giving your own personal opinion, like your advice should be based on scientific studies. And like I said, your TA gonna grade them. So if you have any, uh, any concern, you can just ask your TA about your grade and CC me. Your final project, which I would say it is the fun part of the class, um, for that, you're gonna address uh, one health misinformation for example back in covid time <laughs> there was a narrative that people saying that drinking bleach can kill covid-19 virus uh which honestly when you are sitting here and just actually thinking about that it might be true right because yeah it is bleach and covid-19 is inside but you shouldn't just drink bleach to just kill covid-19 and there are a lot of reasons out there why this kind of remedy not going to work on COVID in your body. So, for example, for this problem, you're going to read different views and you're going to just address everything and you're going to actually conclude and add your own opinion for addressing this problem. You can find um, more info about this in the syllabus and I'm going to post um, like the actual assignments um in the middle of the semester hopefully before spring break yeah i really like a spring break literally i'm counting the days even now for um spring break but that's another story so here you can see your grading criteria and um again if you had any sort of question you can just always uh email and ask me here on the top it's a typo i'm gonna fix it could, I mean, in the beginning, the total grade, it was like 130, but now it's just 115. Um, so your total one going to be this number. Okay. Yes. Um, I know 
some of you guys, um, you were in the waiting list and cause like I could get a lot of emails from everyone. And I would say you made a wise decision to take this course with me. Cause like, first of all, um, I always put my students as my priority. Um, I really work so hard to just see them successful and just make sure um, they are enjoying the course. Like literally they are understanding the material and they are having fun with my course. Um, also, I'm going to provide different research opportunities for everyone in the class. So even though you don't want to work with me or with anyone around me, like, cause like if I would find any sort of research opportunity, I would post on a college and I would just encourage everyone to apply for that. In case you wouldn't like to just work anywhere or for any lab, still you're going to have your final project, which is just a pure research opportunity for you. So you can just show your talent, your final project, and you can be successful in research as well. So I talked a lot. Honestly, I always just break down the lecture in uh, five or six videos. Every video must be 10 minutes because this is I would say this is a student's attention span. Um, so I guess this is one of the first time that I am talking that much. Uh, but here is your next week's assignment. Um, you're gonna do a discussion post in which you're gonna introduce yourself and you're gonna do your quiz because it is very important and um, you're gonna be graded based on your quiz. Um, so, Okay, I will just stop sharing the screen. So here we are, um, our very first lecture of our very first week. Uh, like you saw just now, I'm not uh, teaching a chapter this week because I want you to check the syllabus, take the syllabus quiz and mark down your calendar to just make sure you are on top of all the deadlines. Um, only this way, you can just succeed in this course. So always make sure you know that you do have quizzes by like by the end of every week, every Sunday, 1159. Um, mark down um, the discussion time whenever we do have discussion posts, check your final project due date um, because this is very important and um, ask me whatever questions that you might have. That is all for now. So if you had any sort of question, you can always email me. Um, and next week, I'm going to start uh, talking about your chapter one and we're going to have more serious talk. So I'm very happy um, to meet you guys. I'm going to check all the discussion posts. I mean, all of your posts, um, like introduction posts and discussion parts. And um, that is all for now. Thank you. Thank you so much.